Hello and welcome to this AB Tutor demonstration video. In this video I shall cover some of the main differences between version 8 and version 9 of AB Tutor. This is intended for current users of version 8 who are interested in the upgrade. We've kept the main interface relatively similar to version 8 to minimise the amount of retraining required. In fact, a lot of end users will be able to continue using the software in the same way they used to whilst taking advantage of many of the improvements. The main change in version 9 is the introduction of the central server. This is a new component of AB Tutor which will always be running on your network, allowing the clients and consoles to connect directly to it rather than trying to find each other. This will eliminate all of the most common connection problems. The central server will also act as a storage repository for the client logs, allowing console users to access them at any time rather than having to rely on the clients being turned on and fetching the logs from them. User management has been improved, allowing different user accounts for all users with different roles that can be assigned as appropriate. We will also be storing user settings centrally, meaning that any user can log on to any console and have all of their policies, groups and other settings available to them. Finally, because policy settings are held on the central server, they will be applied automatically to the clients without needing a console to be online at the time. We've added some extra options for the main view, allowing the user to choose whether their clients are organised by device, by user or by session. These different modes are intended for the different ways of using AB Tutor, whether the user is monitoring a room of normal computers, a number of sessions on a terminal server, or keeping an eye on specific users. The next change is the policy creation wizard. We have revamped this to give more options to the user whilst keeping it simple to use. You can now apply multiple effects to a single policy rather than having to create multiple individual policies. The schedule and network options are still included, allowing policies to be applied at certain times of the day or when the client is on certain networks. The individual tabs for the effect specific settings are still here. On the final page you can now select an icon and a colour for the policy, allowing policies of the same type to be easily distinguished. Policies can now be created either as private policies, which means only the user who created them can see them in the policy list and apply them, or if the user is an admin, they can create shared policies which are available to all users. This allows users to create their own policies without filling up everyone else's lists, but still allows admins to create policies for other users to use. Once a policy is applied to a client, it will show for all users, and if not protected, can be removed by anyone. We have also split the protected and disableable options, allowing policies to be removed temporarily or blocked from being removed by non-admins. Policies can now be applied in various different ways. The first way is to apply them to the device, as in older versions of the software. Policies applied in this way will sit on the specified computer, affecting anyone who uses it. The second way is to apply them to a user. These policies will follow that user around, being automatically applied whenever the user logs into a computer and being removed when they log off. Next, policies can be applied to a session. These policies will expire when the user logs off. Finally, policies can be applied to groups, including the All Devices group. These policies will affect all sessions in the relevant groups and can't be removed by non-admins. Applied policies will be shown with a small icon in the corner to clarify why they are affecting that session. Any applied policy will show further information in its tooltip, including why it's applied, who owns the policy, and whether it is disableable, protected or temporary. The private versus shared split also applies to lock screens, key sequences and launch manager entries, allowing admins to give users pre-built commands and settings to use. In AB version 9, we have introduced some new group types. We still have groups of devices, but now groups of users can be created, allowing specific users to be restricted or monitored. We also have string match versions of these groups, which allow wildcards to be used and allow unregistered users to be added to a group. Finally, we also have dynamic groups, which allow students to join a teacher's group instead of the group having to be defined in advance. There are multiple ways to add entries to a group, including selecting them from a list, entering them manually, dragging them from the All Items view, or setting up sync jobs with Active Directory. We have added an option for scheduled wake on LAN, allowing client machines to automatically be turned on at specified times. With the new user management in AB Tutor, we now have different levels of settings. An administrator can set up global default settings, which will affect a new user. The user can then override these settings by configuring their own, but the user settings can be further overridden by an administrator setting the global overrides. This gives the maximum flexibility whilst keeping the interface as clean and for normal users as possible. These settings include things like the icons which appear on the toolbar and watch settings. The central server comes with a web interface for configuration. The dashboard gives the administrator quick links to license the install, download the console and client installer, and other commonly used options. From the Devices tab, new client installs can be approved, and a list of existing registered clients can be seen. The Users tab allows users to be created and roles given to them, including client users, console users, console admins, and web admin. The Server tab allows the admin to configure settings for email alerts on policy violations, license the server, and set up AD sync jobs. 
These AD sync jobs can keep AB Tutor groups synchronized with an AD OU and can also add new AB users when AD users are added to an OU. Finally, the Device Settings tab allows the admin to configure site-wide device level options such as proxy bypass, warning messages and security options for preventing uninstall or stopping the service. I hope this overview of the new version has been interesting and useful. If you have any questions about it, please contact us at support at abtutor.com. Thank you for watching.